Yo, what's up everyone, welcome back, Jamie here today and we're going to be talking about A House of a Thousand Corpses which was released in 2003 written and directed by Rob Zombie, his first actual film and it introduces some really good characters slash villains the story is pretty basic but it's a really good start of his film career you can tell his style is there, like some people have issues with Rob Zombie's scripts and I do as well, he's an amazing director, like some of his scripts work but like the dialogue throughout each film it doesn't match sometimes, it matches with this and Devil's Rejects though. And like I said the style of shooting as well, he does introduce some cool shots and also he experiments as well and some of the transitions and stuff, it, it feels like an acid trip this film, it really does, so let's just jump right into it. It starts off at the uh, Spaulding's gas station and we're introduced to Captain Spaulding played by the amazing Sid Haig and this character, this is what I'm talking about, he steals the show, he really does. He's only in the film for like 20 minutes which is a shame but Captain Spaulding man he steals the show but <laughs> you're getting a lot of dialogue back and forth with him and his work or and then like two people uh, busting with guns trying to rob the place <laughs> and Spaulding's like not phased by this he's like fuck your mama fuck your sister and eventually they get shot inside the head and he's like most of all fuck you cuts to black and he's like I got blood on my favorite clown suit <laughs> and we get the intro with Rob Zombie's song Cows for Thousand Corpses main tune and you know Rob Zombie as, as you can tell he is a musician he does make music he's really good at art as well and the soundtrack inside this film is really really good so after the uh, title sequence we're introduced to our main characters i guess we don't care about these and we're not really supposed to we're like watching this for the fireflies really but we got two couples we got chris hardwick and rain wilson the guy from the office and their two girlfriends and on like a road trip and chris hardwick's really annoying inside this film i gotta say he really is so they stop at spaulding's and they take the murder ride and basically it's inside Spaulding's like gas station it's like a little train ride where he's got all these like killers from the past and he talks about Dr. Satan as well who escaped from a mental institution and he made like superhuman like people but every line and delivery from Haig is amazing here man it's like how long's a piece of string? too goddamn long and you gotta stop with a jackass question <laughs> so one of the girls calls her dad to give like an update and there's a news report playing and Bill Mosley's playing the news reporter as well and he's also playing always later on Spaulding draws a map from where Dr. Satan last location was and he just sends him off on the way basically a little adventure for him on the way there to pick up a hitchhiker named Baba, played by sherry moon zombie rob zombie's wife they actually met on this film and some people criticize like why does rob have to put her inside every single film but baby is the role for her man like halloween i sort of understand but this is the role for her and also like tim burton does it all the time like a lot of that a lot of directors do that they use the same actors all the time don't they but it doesn't really bother me that much like some people really get bothered by sherry moon but i think she's decent like obviously she's not the best actor inside the world but she's not the worst either the car tire gets shot out so they have to go to the firefly house and that's where we get introduced to otis played by bill mosley another amazing character he's got the three missing cheerleaders inside his room and he's just ranting and rambling like you can tell he's a crazy guy he really is we get introduced to the rest of the firefly family we get the mother as well who's really flirting with rain wilson's character and then we get a dinner scene and i'm telling you right now in case you can already tell rob zombie is a really big fan of the texas chainsaw massacre because this is pretty much it's not identical but it pretty much nearly is i would like to see a film where the fireflies go against the soyuz that would be pretty cool we're never gonna get it but you know that would have been pretty cool we got a dinner scene and tiny shows up who's this massive man with a burnt face years ago the dad burnt the house down with him inside and he's the professor character we'll see later on with like the gas mask uh, dr satan's been working on him and then the grandpa's like it's show time and they all start doing like this show but like, he's doing comedy first and then baby starts doing like this musical until they get into a fight and they try to leave but they're attacked by otis and tiny they pretend to be scarecrows outside like that and you start coming busting into the car and eventually they wake up and otis has turned rain wilson into fish boy <laughs> he's cut his like body it's not funny it's kind of horrific if you think about it but he's cut his whole body off and he's turned him into half fish half boy we get another captain spaulding scene with the sheriff showing up like questioning him about the missing people and once again like i said this is the last uh spaulding we'll see until the very end really like that's what i love about devil's rejects like he's in it a lot more he's definitely the strongest part of this film but he's barely in it the film starts falling off the rails just a little bit for me here yeah. like it's just it starts dragging on a bit like i said we don't really care about these main characters we care about the villains but we don't care if these guys survive or not. They just we just don't. And obviously that's not the main of the film because the aim of the film is to make us care about the antagonist. I understand that. But yeah, we got Tiny he has a shirt saying cheap ass Halloween costume. And one of the girls is downstairs. She's like, oh please let me go. And he just lets her go and he's like, alright, bye, I'll see you later. But I know it comes and puts her back inside the cage. This is a cool scene. The cops arrive at a firefly house and the sheriff starts questioning the uh, mother 
until the other two go outside and find all the bodies inside the shack. And then they just, the one pulls out a gun, just shoots the sheriff right through the head. And then Otis comes and he's got the other cop right there with the gun. And it's just a slow pan out in slow motion. It takes forever until eventually he shoots and he goes down. It's an artistic shot, definitely. It is pretty cool. Then we switch to nighttime. We go to Pussy Liquor. They're trying to get some liquor and we got the pussy liquor song playing for rob zombie as well and this is some good quote he's like baby's like we like to get fucked up and do fucked up shit and he's like oh i bet you do one of the girls dad's died now like i said from the last scene always cuts off his face and wears it now tell me if you've ever seen this before does it sound familiar because it's clearly texas chainsaw massacre just like the dinner table scene from before that's what i'm saying man rob zombie took his love for texas chainsaw he put a little bit of a twist on it introduces more main characters in it and then, you know, he just went away with it, really. Another amazing quote is like, it's all real, the boogeyman's real, and you found him. Another amazing quote, really is. So they all get dressed up for a ritual, and they send them on the ground to Dr. Satan. And like I said, this is where the film sort of loses me a little bit. Because she eventually, like, roaming around, eventually she finds Dr. Satan, and we get a good look at him. He does look cool, he's got all, like, he's, he's dead skinny with his mask on. I got the figure over there, like, all wires, he's doing operations on people, trying to make them into superhumans or whatever. But then she gets chased around by the dad, aka the professor with the gas mask, who burnt down tiny when he was a kid and eventually like, he's, he's about to swing she ducks and it causes a collapse and that's how she escapes she comes back out spalding's there inside a car and picks her up he's like oh everyone's looking for you girl he's like oh just sleep you'll be all right and then otis comes out the back seat looks at otis looks at her and it cuts the black and she's back inside dr satan's laboratory now that could be a uh, it could be a dream or it could actually happen but either way we never see this character again and you know i don't even remember her name i i, I just don't care <laughs> like i said i watched this film for the uh, antagonist right like captain spaulding and otis and stuff but yeah house of falcon corpses i'm gonna give it a seven out of ten like i said it's amazing villains and soundtrack the story's kind of weak and the main characters i don't really care about so the ending kind of drags because of that i only watch it for the antagonist and i think rob zombie understood this because the next film the devil's rejects one of my favorite of all time like it's just completely focused on them three and that's what we're watching it for but yeah let me know your thoughts and opinions about house of falcon corpses down below but we're going to be reviewing devil's rejects next week and then free from hell and i might rank the three films as well but yeah, like i said like rob zombie is a really good director the writing's hit or miss like it depends on the tone of the film like the writing makes sense for this and devil's rejects but halloween that that did not match, man. That did not match. <laughs> but yeah, until next time, make sure you like and subscribe. Until next time, peace out in a bit.